Hello all and welcome to Wild Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous little washcloth, dishcloth, face cloth, whatever you want to call it. And the colour combination chosen today was chosen by the lovely Cara, one of our subscribers during Live Antics uh, on a Saturday mornings live. And we have Saturday mornings live at 10am Melbourne, Australia time. Marry that up with your country. And also at 4pm Wednesday afternoons, once again, marry that up with your country. Now, the Saturday mornings live, we have a thing called Live Antics, and one of our subscribers gets to choose the colour combination of our very next tutorial. And today, Cara chose, well, about a week ago, Cara chose this colour combination. She had no idea what I was creating, but she chose this colour combination. All right, so what will you need for today's tutorial? You will need, this is actually 30 grams of Karen Cakes. Now, I didn't even get to the yellow, okay? This one here is what I used and it's collapsed now. <laughs> I didn't even get to the yellow, but there you go. So you will need 30 grams of Karen Cakes. Now, it is a cotton, but well, let's get a close-up. I think it's only some cotton. Let's move that out of the way. It is 60% 60 uh, 60 cotton and 40% acrylic. This is a 100 gram skein, but I only used um, 30 grams, all right? It does call for a, oh, I even took it down again, let's have a look. It calls for a five millimeter hook. I used a five millimeter hook, but you know, you could use whatever hook size you like, so long as it, it's, similar to the yarn um, to what states on your yarn label now to be fair I don't know if I was tired but I seem to have crocheted this a little loose so in my opinion I would have benefited to go down a hook size to a 4.5 millimeter hook now I usually crochet very tightly so it might be the actual stitch itself which if you think about it, ribbing does stretch a little bit. And when you're doing ribbing in a single crochet or a half double, this is ribbing. That's what it is, guys. That's all it is. You're putting it around your wrist and there you have yourself a beautiful sweater. Yeah, you can do anything you want with this stitch. Yeah. All right. So I wished I had gone down a hook size to a 4.5. But that's not completely necessary. You will need a measuring tape. Again, not necessary. Just make your piece the size that you want. So as long as the width is the width that you like, yeah, then you need to do your rows all the way up to the height that you want. I used a measuring tape just for the, you know, the sake of using it, but it's not um, necessary yeah and also you can use any cotton you don't have to use Karen cakes just remember if you use a lightweight cotton you need to add more stitches and you need to add more rows if you use a thicker cotton drop some stitches and drop some rows all right you will need two stitch markers I have a few hanging around here all the time uh, that's not necessary you could also use safety pins or paper clips. You don't necessarily need all this fancy jazz, you know, all this fancy gear when you are making pieces. And we'll talk about that next week. Uh, and you will need your scissors. There. You will need a sewing darning needle. Doesn't necessarily have to be one like this. I just use this one. You do need it because you need to weave in your end at the beginning and weaving your end at the end. All right, uh, I show you how to do chains and then you can, you know, grab your little soap and you can, I don't know what you wanna do, you can do it like, whoops, like that and like that and like that and like that and you can tie it up and make it a pretty little gift idea for Christmas or birthday or anniversary, whatever you would like to do. Now, I just mentioned before, this soap is beautiful and it's really, the whole hell smells like it. But anyway, beside the point, let's moving right along. That's what you will need for your piece. There's all the items you will need. If um, you want it extra, you can go ahead and do extra. You can make yours bigger or smaller. Heads up, if you kept going on this piece for as long as you want, you could make yourself a scarf. Get way too excited. This stitch is good for 
anything. I'm not going to hold you up anymore. I just want to say good luck creating your gorgeous washcloth. And once again, a special thank you to the lovely Cara for her colour combination. It's upside down <laughs> today for our beautiful little washcloth. Good luck all. Alrighty guys, we're going to start off by making a slip knot. Grab the tail end of your yarn before you do. Give yourself a longer tail. Maybe one, you know, three or four fingers, five fingers, doesn't matter. Just make it long enough to weave in because we are making a dishcloth. And the more you use a dishcloth, which you would use a lot by washing, scrubbing, popping in the washing machine, starting again, the more you have that risk of that tail coming out. But if you've made a really long one and we really overweave that tail, which we're going to do later, then that won't come out. All right, that's a bit of a tip, yeah? Grab your yarn, wrap it around this finger twice. So once and twice, holding it there and holding it down there. All right, you've got it all in, in your hand, nice and tight. Grab your back loop, passing it halfway over your finger, hold it there. Grab the other loop, passing it all the way over, and you have formed yourself a little slip knot. All right, nice long tail. That's probably too long, but anyway, <laughs> never mind. Um, so we are going to make chains. And a chain in crochet is yarn over your hook, pull a loop through to the loop on your hook once. Yarn over, pull through, two. Yarn over, pull through, three. Yarn over, pull through, four and five and so on all right so what we're going to do is we're going to chain up 32 chains all right um if you chained up 36 chains it doesn't matter if you chain 28 chains it doesn't matter i'm only using even stitch because that's what i feel like using also if you chained 160 say or 180 or 200 you can make yourself a blanket using just this stitch there's no real fancy count, all right? Usually you have to chain five, add two, chain two, add seven, that sort of thing. But this is not fancy. Just keep going all the way up, turn, and then you continue your pattern. So we're going to chain 32 all together. We've done five, and off we go. I'm going to pop this on fast so you don't have to watch me doing it. But six, seven, and off we go. And 32. Now again you can chain, chain up more if you like or you could have had less it doesn't matter all right now there are two ways we can do this I'm going to show you the beginners way first and then we're going to do the other way where it can be a little bit tricky all right we're going to be doing a double crochet and for beginners this is what I want you to do yarn over your hook and you see these little loops right here count one two Three. See that top loop there? Yeah. So one, two, three. And in that fourth one there, very top loop, pop your hook in. Now beginners, don't do this if you want to attempt the more trickier stitch. All right. But if you do want to do just this one, then you pop your hook in. You pull a loop through. And you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Two loops left. Yarn over, pull through the last two. All right, now that is the beginner double crochet. Now we're still going to do double crochet, but we're going to do what we call double crochet in the back bump. Now beginners, take a risk, try this, and then you can take it undone and do it again. So yarn over your hook. The back bump is you turn your work around and you see these little bumps you see right here. They're the stitches we want to go in. What that does is it keeps the base of your swatch or square or washcloth the same look as the top all right so here we go there's our first bump right there so oh, we're gonna have another look there's our first bump right there one two three and four and see that bump right there you pop your hook in pull a loop through three loops on your hook Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through the last two. Before we continue, this is for um, both beginners and more advanced stitches. Grab your stitch marker. See the stitch we just made, which is that one right there. Yeah, Right next to it is a loop right there. 
and a loop at the back. Now, if you can't do this, leave it there and I'll show you how to go into those loops later. You should have one loop on the base of your stitch and two loops on top. All right, that's what you should have right there. Okay, so what we have now is literally, even though we've only done one stitch, this is classified as a second one, so we have two stitches. Now, your job is to do double crochets in every stitch across. So beginners, remember, if you want to do your double crochets in your top loop, yarn over your hook, that's the top one you see in front of you right there, the top ones, all right? But for the rest of us and beginners, if you want to take a risk, turn your work to the side and you will see that little tiny bump. You'll actually see the bump it sticks up at you. So pop your hook in, pull a loop through like so, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two, yarn over your hook, off you go, doing the whole row all the way across. It's super easy for more advanced and super duper easy for the beginners if you are using the other loop. So the deal is a nice and tight stitch there. Let's try that again. I've just split it as you do. Um, this is going to happen if you crochet tightly like me. Yeah. <laughs> so the deal is you do just that all the way across your row. Okay. Oh, so tricky. Now being careful, I just pulled up two loops there. Being careful, only pull up the one loop like so. All right, I'm not going to sit here and let you watch me struggle through the back loops, through the lens of the camera, but let me show you what I mean. That's the top of your stitch. Turn it over and the base looks exactly the same. Now, if you are a beginner, yours won't. Yours will be kind of like pulling down a little bit, which is normal for that stitch. All right, but check it out. How cool is this? Yeah. All right, I'm going to leave that with you. I want you to head off on your own. Do your double crochets all the way across. Leave the last uh, two back bumps or the last one back bump and I'll meet you there once you're done. Alrighty guys, so I've asked you to get to the end of your row. Now, um, I've done, I think I've got two stitches left, yeah, so I've done most of mine. So it's yarn over your hook. Now if you are new, your crochet stitches will be like that. You just put your double crochet into your second last stitch and then one into there. And I'll talk to you about that in a minute. But for everyone else, let's continue doing our back bumps right there. Do your double crochet into your second last stitch. Oh, did I split it? No, it's all good. Uh, to the new crocheter, when you get here, you're just doing your double crochet in that last stitch. All right, and ignore the knot. For the rest of us, turn around. We're doing our double crochet in that back bump, which will be a little trying, but get in there and do that right there. From here, I'm going to bring that down a little bit. I need you to count your stitches across. And the way you do that is, and I'll show you the stitch nice and close. The way you do that is you are counting these two top loops here or the letter V. This is what we call it in crochet. That little letter V, they're your stitches. And that is including the stitch marker stitch that you have. So it's one, two, three, four, five. All right, before you go away and count, I want to show you one other thing. That's your stitch, as I said before, yeah? That's the front loop of your stitch, and that's the back loop of your stitch right there. If we were to turn it around, you keep yours nice and straight, your stitches will be pushing that way a little bit and not facing you. So you need to find the front loop, so you face it towards you, you need to find the front loop of your stitch, and in the back loop. That's for later. I just wanted to show you that real quickly. But for now, all I need you to do is beginners only, chain one, two, and three. Also beginners, grab your stitch marker and pop it in those top two loops there. If you wanted to try the other way, my suggestion would be to try it. Make an effort to take a risk on your stitches. It's not going to hurt as a one-off occasion. Pop your stitch marker in and there you go. Now you're going to flip your work. We're going to work along these stitches. So you need to flip your work. You can turn it any way you like. 
yarn over your hook. Now, you are already in that stitch. This is for beginners only. You are in that stitch. Face your work to you. Can you see the two loops? There's your front loop and there's your back loop. We are doing our double crochet not in the full stitch, not in the front loop, but in that back loop right there. Pop your hook in, pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, two loops left, yarn over, pull through the last two. And you're going to do another one in the next. So turn it over, back loops, and off you go doing yours all the way across. However, I'm going to take this undone because I want to show you um, a stitch that's a little better than the one you've just done. Because the one you've just done, um, at the end of the row, once your piece is finished, you're going to have massive gaps between your first stitch and your second one. And also, it doesn't keep your work straight. Whereas this stitch does. You flip your work without chaining anything. In that same stitch that you are in, it's a bit tight, but it's there. You pop your hook in. You pull a loop through. Two loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through both those loops. That's actually called a single crochet. But we're not going to leave it there. We're going to hold on to that loop. Don't worry about that first stitch or that first loop you see there. Go into the base loop of that stitch. Pull a loop through. Two loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through both those loops. Grab your stitch marker. And you're placing it in the top two loops of that stitch you just created. Now it looks a little different than the chain three, a lot thicker, filling up that space and later without chaining it's given it that straight edge look. I love this stitch. That's called a standing double crochet. There are other standing double crochets which I'll show you in the future but this one here is my favorite. Then you're going to do the back loops like we were doing before with the beginners. Turn your work over, pop your hook in the back loop, pull your loop through, three loops, yarn over, pull through two, two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two, and off you go doing your back loop all the way across your row. Being careful not to skip a stitch. All right, how you can tell, you face it to you. You're in that one. Your very next one is right there. So it's back loop only. Yeah, super easy. I love this pattern. I love it because it's easy. And once you know it, after the second and third row, you can do this while watching TV. Seriously, it will be one of those things that you can do whilst watching your favourite show on television. So I'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do the whole row. I would like you to do the whole row Get to your second last stitch, complete that one, and wait for me there, and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Alrighty, guys, here we are at the end of the row. See how it's giving you a little ridged looking feel? That's the look we're going for. Well, that's the look we're going for. She's singing now. All right, so here we go. So I asked you to get to your second last stitch. You may not have completed it. Have a look if you have. I haven't, so I'm going to do that second last stitch in the back loop only. But for the very last stitch, you want to go straight into the stitch marker. Now, if it's anything like mine, which is really tight, you want to get into both those loops, yeah? Not just one. Mine's really tight, so I'm taking out my stitch marker, which is good because then I can show the newbies where to pop the hook. So yarn over your hook. You're going through the top loop of the stitch and the top loop of the back stitch, the back of the stitch, I should say, right there. Pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, two loops left, yarn over, pull through the last two. And what you have is that. Now, once again, uh, count your stitches across with the little V's here. Make sure you have 30. Don't underestimate the fact that you may have missed a stitch across here because this stitch can be a little tricky and easy to miss all right so just make sure you have 30 stitches across once you have your 30 we can continue with the next row 
But firstly, I want to say one thing about the next row. See the row that we just did? That row right there, that is the row that you are going to be repeating over and over and over. And did I say over again? <laughs> just keep going to the size that you want, the measurement that you want. But I'm going to start you off real quickly so you can see the ridged look once we turn around. Now again, if you are new, chain three, pop your stitch marker in your third chain. But for the rest of us, we're going to turn our work around and do our standing double crochet again. In the same stitch, you're holding your thread there, you're popping your hook in the stitch, same stitch you are in, yeah? Pull a loop through like that, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Once again, holding that thread, ignoring the top loop, but going into the base loop of that stitch you just created. Pop your hook in, pull a loop through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both those loops, grabbing your stitch marker. All right, that's it. Now, yarn over your hook, face your work to you. You are already in that stitch. So when you face your work, your very next stitch is there. You are popping your double crochet in the back loop. All right, remember we are going in the back loop only. Right there, pop your hook in, pull a loop through, three loops, yarn over, two, two loops, yarn over, two. Yeah. I don't know why I'm saying it. You know what you're doing. You just need to face your work to you to find that back loop. Face your work to you. Oops, I've just lost my thread. Hello. There's a bit of a knot there. Detangled. And there you go. It's super easy. I love this stitch. I love the ridged look effect it gives. And I love that when we do the standing double crochet, we don't get that gap in between like you do with the chains, all right? And you watch, after about the fourth row, you're going to see how straight these edges are, yeah? Now, before we continue, before we do anything else, I'm going to let you head off on your own and do the next 50 million rows that you're going to do. We want to talk about changing colours. Now this yarn is a continuous colour. Hopefully there's no knots. You just keep crocheting until you find the end of your piece, which, you know, you'll, you'll find that easy. That's not an issue. However, yours truly would not like that yellow thread to land flat bang in the middle of my work. That's not saying that it's going to do that, right? But I mean something like this. Let's pretend, let's pretend. I'll show you a yarn change, a colour change in the middle of the row anyway, just to pretend that it's happened. So yarn over your hook, you start your double crochet like normal. You've got your three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Pop your thread in the back of your hand, grabbing a new thread, a new colour. Let's pretend that you're not doing this and you're just pulling your loop through like normal. And all of a sudden, your colour has changed. Notice how I'm holding the threads in my back, the back of my hand. Yarn over the hook, and we're going to go into the next stitch with a back loop, double crochet, like normal. Keep going all the way across, like normal. Now let's just pretend that I didn't do that. But if you were doing a colour change, you might notice that big loop pulling. All you do is grab both your threads and give them a gentle tug, not too tight, and it tightens everything up. All right, so it looks as straight as the others. But let's say that, for argument's sake, that happened to you, and you didn't want the colour change. Pretend that we didn't change the colour. Oh, that's way too close for this. Pretend we didn't change the colour, and you didn't want the colour change, and you look at it from far away like this, and you see that look. That's dark pink, that's dark, that's light pink. I don't like the look of it in the middle of my row. So what I'm going to do, if you don't like the look of that, I'll take it undone, the whole row. All right, that's only if you don't like the look of it, seriously. I'm not going to worry too much about it, but if you don't like the look of it, you want to get 
down to the base of your last row, the row that you just did. Start your double crochet, hold it there. Grab your new color, pop it over your hook, pull a loop through. Oops, oops. So you've got your new color there and your old color. Hold them in your hands at the back. Turn your work like normal and do your next stitch like normal. Exactly the same as you would any other row. Or if you are chaining three, I'll show you that in a minute. And then pop your stitch marker in there. But notice how the color change will happen at the beginning of your row. Only do this if you are pedantic. Only take your row undone and do it if you're like me and want the color change to be at the beginning or the end of your row. Yeah? So let's say you are chaining. You've pulled your loop through like so. Still pop your old tail and your new tail in the back of your hand there. Chain your three. One, two, and three. Once again, you're popping your stitch marker on the top two loops. You're turning your work. And you are continuing along in the back loops like normal, not that one. That's the first one. That's the one you're in. You want to go into that next one. Later, you have to weave in those ends really, really well. So my suggestion would be when you cut that pink right there, make it a really long tail. This is only if you want to um, change your colours. If you don't want to change your colours and let the yarn do the changing for you, then this is going to be super easy for you. You're just going to keep going over and over again, repeating that row that we just did over and over and over until you're done. Now, how many rows do I hear you ask? I'm just going to pop that there so that this doesn't come undone anymore. I'll fix that up off air. You don't have to worry about it. How many rows do you need? I hear you ask. Well, this is entirely up to you. So grab your measuring tape and measure along the base of your work. And roughly it measures, on. this is a rough amount and it doesn't have to be even, 19 centimetres or seven and a half inches. All right, so what you want to do is turn your guy around this way, grab your measuring tape, keep doing your rows until you reach a rough amount of, what do we say, 19 centimetres or seven and a half inches. Now you can do more or less, it doesn't matter. Yours truly is going to do exactly another 16 more rows. All right, so your job now is to repeat this row over and over again until you get to the measurement that you like and for me that's going to be another 16 rows and I'll meet you back here once you're done. Alrighty guys here we are at the end of the piece and as you can see yours truly did change colour. In fact I changed colour twice. You can't see the other colour because I already weaved that in Roughly around here, let's get a close-up so you can have a look. Roughly around where the yellow dots kind of start, which was there. So roughly around there and you can't tell, yeah, because I weaved it in on the opposite side. Now, how do you know which is the front to your back? Well, if you're anything like me, your tail end where you first started should be in your left hand and your the row that you started your double crochets with should be your right side. So that is your right side. Initially, that is your right side. However, you may like that side. So it doesn't really matter in this case being a washcloth which is right or wrong, yeah? And look at that. I mean, you could have made a top in those stitches. Excuse me. You could make anything you want in those stitches. So there you go. All right. So let's check the measurements. I did 16 rows like I said I would. You could have done 18, 20. You could have done 40. You could have done as many as you like and made a scarf. What? You could have gone more across this way and then more up that way and made yourself a blanket. Whatever you did with your pattern Look, it's endless really it's endless but let's measure up real quickly across this way I said it was around well, let's get a close-up 
Well, let's get her close up. I said it was around. That's the straightest we can get it right there. I said it was around 19 and a half centimetres and seven and a half inches. Oh, 19 centimetres, seven and a half inches. It did come out a little bit. So it's come out to 19 and a half. And that's okay, you know. So the other way, same thing. Measure across this way. Oh, I was lucky. Actually, that matched, matches 19 and a half, seven and nearly eight inches, all right? But anyway, it doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way um, of doing this. This is the size that matches you. If you don't mind scrubbing your bench like that and having a big uh, washcloth or face cloth or whatever you want to call it dishcloth then that's okay for you but that's that I'm not going to talk anymore we're just going to continue you will need a sewing needle for this part and you will actually we better finish off the row and you will need to finish off your row now this is the end of my 16th row you should still have your 30 stitches across or whatever you started with and once again you're going into your very last stitch like normal and you're doing your double crochet like normal now a lot of people pull up the loop and play with their stitching I'm not going to do that I'm just going to pull a loop right through big long tail doesn't have to be that long that's exaggerated a little bit <laughs> give your work a cut do you like that that's exaggerated a little bit give your work a cut really push down on that knot yeah so oh well, take out your stitch markers for it. starters one and the other one over there you don't need him there anymore unless you want to do more rows then you shouldn't have cut your thread <laughs> she's just an exaggerator isn't she all right so we are going to grab our sewing needle so there we go we've got our end so find the back of your work now this to me is going to be the back of my work and let me bring it out so you can see we went across this way we pulled our loop through this is going to be the back of my work so we're going to find a way to bring our thread down all the way down there and pass it through some of these tails in fact what we'll do is we'll bring it right down right down to here and then pop it through here come back and then you can come back up if you like you can put your thread anywhere you like yeah but I'm gonna bring mine down the side a little bit and let's Move this guy out of the way and let's blow it up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So down the sides, again, you can go across the top, whichever suits you. So I'm just going to pick up a loop. Now you don't have to have one of these little flick, they're, they're um, darning needles. You don't have to have one of those. A normal sewing needle would have been better. I'm just going to pop it around that loop and go down the back. Then I'm going to find another loop to go into, which I think this one here looks good. I'm not worried about it being visible from the other side because it's the same colour in, in this case. All it's going to do is thicken up your last stitch and then go into the loop of this stitch. Now normally I would split the thread, but this cotton is a bit awkward to split. So I'm just going through loops for now, just some loops real quickly. And then I'm going right down. I want to go all the way down. And I'll tell you why when we get there. Here's another side loop there. And then you've got this base loop here. And then we're going to stop there because... Now you don't have to do this. You can keep going down and then go across somewhere else. But I want to go into all this stitching at the back here. So that's our front. There's the back. It will be here across there. And you won't be able to see it because... It's back looped, if that makes any sense. So we're going to find a little stitch, go into it. Yeah. And then I'm going to go into the two, under those two loops from our stitch. And while you're doing that, you could actually split some yarn if you like, whilst you're doing that. You don't have to. You can just go through both the loops because we're going to overdo it so that it's weaved in until we're you know can't weave it in anymore <laughs> do you like that do we can't weave it in anymore so this is what we call the basic um face cloth wash cloth if you will you could call it a face cloth wash cloth dish cloth you can use it for anything you want 
You can even use it as a, a dusting rag, if you will. You don't even have to use it as a face cloth. You can keep going through there, but guess what I'm going to do? Turn around, skip one of those threads and go into the second thread there. Like that. And don't pull too tight this one because that will separate your stitches and you don't want them separated. Then you can start going back. <clears throat> Let's make sure that's stretched enough. You can start going back in the same direction that you were going through. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you split the yarn a little bit. It's okay. As long as you can't see your needle from the front. So check the front regularly and make sure you can't see your needle. And there you go. Now, guess what? We're not done. You can um, literally stop it there. And cut your thread but yours truly when it comes to something like this normally I'm a stickler with my ends anyway most of my subscribers already know that my regulars so if you're joining us new welcome don't forget to uh, subscribe like share do all the other things that everyone else does for me <laughs> it doesn't cost you anything and it does help me bring more tutorials to you so I'm going down a little bit further you don't need to do this this is just Miss Stickler I'm not even going to go down all the way I'm going to come back up back up why because well you know too much is no good a lot is good but too much is no good and just go right back up all the way through the first few stitches oh it's going to be blunt I might not go that way it's going to be pulling too tight I'll just go around back into these stitches again. Oh, I'm not even in frame. Hello, Mary. She's not in frame, guys. All I did was went back into the, remember the first stitches that we went through, the first set of stitches. I'm going back into that and I'm done. So what I'm going to do now, and I've pulled that too tight. Don't pull it too tight. You're going to pull it back in a minute anyway, and it's going to hide those that thread. And just give it a really big tug. That thread will hide inside all the thicknesses. All right, so flip your work and there you go. I'll bring that out a bit. Oh, hello, excuse me. There, all right? So that's that. What I want you to do is do the same with this tail, all right? I'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do them. Do the same with this tail. Weave that in there. And then these two tails right here. If you changed your thread, do the same thing. Go down and weave into, I would say drop down and weave into that go in and weave up and down there and come back around here this one here you're going up and you're weaving under there and then you're coming back like so and then you can go up there or whatever you want to do try not to uh, double up on your threads try not to weave that thread into the same thread as that or it bulks out put them in a separate angle in a separate way and it doesn't affect you either way in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, I did say we could add something to it. And there we have. Oh, we're upside down. And there we have having our little dove soap. Now, this soap is simply divine. But sometimes I put in goat's milk soap. And then you can wrap him up like so. You can grab a hook and you can do just this. Oh, I've lost my thread. Here. You can chain however many chains you like. So just make a slip knot. And you don't need to even cut that chain. Yeah? So you just go one, two, three, four, however many you want, five, six, seven, a hundred, it doesn't matter. And then without cutting that thread, you just cut a little bit up to there. So you leave yourself a little bit of thread. You pop him on like that and like that. And you tie him up in a bow and you can give it to someone as a gift for whatever it is that you're gifting, whether it be a birthday, um, an anniversary, Christmas, I don't know, <laughs> whatever you whatever you want to gift. All right. So there you go, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and do all the wonderful things that you guys well, pretty much already do for me. I'm trying to take this thread out. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> There's the right side. Excuse me. Oh, no, that's the right side. <laughs> Come on, Mary, you can do this. Um, <laughs> hide all the tails. 
So thank you very much, Cara, for your colour combination today for our live antics. Thank you very much for joining me. And all I want to say right now is happy washing. <laughs> Ciao for now.